free balloons, we got free balloons here is not what that Disney cast member said. So here we are again, internet folks, talking about balloons at Shanghai Disneyland. I've been asked to respond to a video that appeared on Chinese social media and has since been taken down by authorities that showed an outdoor merchandise cast member selling balloons being besieged by guests who are grabbing at his balloons. Take a look. So what happened? As you can hear in the video, the parade has just wrapped up and the cast member selling the balloons was walking by. This is when, according to Chinese social media and my contacts there, a guest approached the cast member to purchase a balloon. While the cast member was untying the balloons, a suspected park scalper yelled out, get the guy with the balloons, grab his balloons and a mob of guests just rushed and besieged the cast member. The scalper grabbed the cast member and a handful of strings, successfully getting a few balloons. As you can see when the video starts, a number of guests have already gotten a balloon or two, while more are fighting over the few that are left before they float away. Fortunately, the cast member wasn't hurt and security was able to get some of the balloons back. This isn't the first time such behavior has been recorded on film at Shanghai Disneyland. During the park's trial operations, that is the time before the grand opening to the public, a video emerged online of a mob of guests grabbing at a cast member who was handing out fast passes after an attraction downtime. So why do we see this type of behavior at Shanghai Disneyland? Well, as I mentioned in my video about Shelley Mae being struck, it really comes down to education and by extension, culture. Chinese culture has always had a strong emphasis on familial piety. That is, placing the family and one's clan as the most important unit. In other words, take care of yourself and yours before others. Add on top of that previous decades of failed government policies under Mao, like the Great Leap Forward or the Cultural Revolution, where people died of hunger and malnutrition, and suddenly not being the first or taking advantage of an opportunity might mean not having anything to eat for that day, or worse, losing your job, your home, or even imprisonment or death. Add to this a massive population, and competition for resources and opportunities just reinforces this cultural norm. It also means that others will expect you to be as aggressive when competing for greater things, such as schools, jobs, and promotions, just to name a few. And any misstep on your part may mean a win for someone else. Now, of course, China isn't the same place today as it was under Mao. And many of my friends in Shanghai have condemned this behavior. And going back and looking at the video once again, we can see that there are some families that choose to walk away from this event. But it takes generations for a culture to change. Additionally, this is only a small percentage of the population who engage in this type of behavior. But with a population of 1.4 billion people and the majority of them living in urban centers on the eastern side of the country, suddenly even 1% of 1.4 billion people is still 14 million people. That's more than the populations of every individual single US state except Texas, California, New York, and Florida. So suddenly 1% of the Chinese population is a lot of people. But is this behavior exclusive to only China? One could certainly argue that it is more common in China because of the high population and cultural norms. However, we've seen the videos of shoppers back in the States at Black Friday sales. Given that this can and does happen in other countries, such as the US, can we really say it's only Chinese behavior or is this human nature? Maybe it is just human nature to take charge when we see an advantage and culture informs us what is appropriate or inappropriate behavior based on the scenario. It is easy to say without being in the heat of the moment what we might do in such a situation, but can you in all certainty know that you wouldn't act in your own best interest each time a limited opportunity presented itself? But what do you think? Is it culture? Is it human nature? What should Shanghai Disneyland do? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time, internet folks. I hope you enjoy listening to these stories and insights from my time at Shanghai Disneyland and at Walt Disney World. If you did and would like to hear future stories, 
as well as learn more about theme park operations, secrets, and culture, please subscribe so you never miss a future video. And again, thank you so much for watching.